Oh, hello again, and welcome to the VK6CS Fun with Amateur Radio channel. Now, um, this, uh, this arrangement here is um, got an auto tuner at the moment, uh, got that capacitor in series with the output, which is in series with the wire antenna, and there's a static train choke um, across the uh, the antenna and ground. Now, I thought I'd just have a look at the, the antenna impedance on different bands. So, I thought, well, okay, I've got this little adapter here that goes on the antenna analyzer. Let's make sure you can see that. There we go. And uh, I thought, well, let's have a look at the antenna impedance. Now, you might see a little cable swing in front of the camera from time to time. That's a mic lead because this new camera, the sound on it isn't great and um, unless I'm looking directly at it, the sound is pretty low. So I've got a lapel mic on. Okay, well this is the ground wire. Now remember this is a temporary arrangement with these banana plugs. It's just to sort of play around with the antenna and finalise the feeding arrangement. Okay, so the red wire is the wire antenna and the and the black wire is the earth. Let's switch this on. Not sure you can actually see that to be honest. Can you see that? Well I'll carry on and assume that you can. Okay, so that's on 40 meters and it's saying 9 to 1 impedance is greater than 350 ohms. 1.8 megs, it's saying exactly the same. 10 megs, uh, 7 or 8 <laughs> impedance is greater than 350 ohms. Greater than 350 ohms, there we go, run up to 10 megs. Okay, so if I actually want to find out what the impedance is at those frequencies, and you know this will read up to 350 ohms, <coughs> excuse me, if it's greater than that I'm going to, not going to know what the value is. So what I do then is take the antenna and the ground out of there, plug them into the the Ted Entron selectable anun. We'll try nine to one. Like that. And the other end will connect to the antenna analyzer. Like that. And now And cast a bit of a shadow over this and now we can see that on 28 megs we've got an SWI of 2.4 and the impedance is 122 ohms so we know that really the impedance is about 10 times that well it's nine times that so it's 900 and nine times 22 so that's very high and then we have 24 megs, 109 ohms. Again, times 9 is the real impedance presented. 21 megs, 64. <coughs> Pardon me. Uh, then we got 30 at 14.2. So that's uh, a bit less than 300 ohms, isn't it? 270 ohms is the actual antenna impedance at that frequency. 10 megs, 3.6 megs, going back up again. So, so on 80 meters, 149 times 9 is the actual impedance of the antenna. And 95 times 9 is the actual impedance of the antenna on 1.8 megs. So you can see that it's very, very high impedance. Uh, this antenna. Now, um, 
by using the 9 to 1 unun, I can get those uh, those very high impedances down to an impedance that um, wouldn't be too much of a mismatch for the coaxial cable and I could tweak it in with a manual tuner in the house. This auto tuner uh, will tune mm, probably most of the bands, there's a couple that it's not overly keen on um, but I'm not sure they're designed to tune you know impedances like uh, 1k or above, uh, 1000 ohms or above so excuse me what I thought of doing was using that larger 9 to 1 unun that I've got and um, put it on the output of the matcher, the, the Auto ATU, so that the, the band of impedances it's got to deal with will be uh, um, a lot less out there if you know what I mean and it might be happier matching once those, uh, once those impedances are sort of broadly transformed uh, to a range of um, I don't know what 300 ohms down to um, what 300 ohms to you know what was it 60 ohms 30 ohms something like that and that might make it far more um, f far easier to uh, to match it or a far more comfortable match I haven't actually tried it yet but um, this is where we're going or where I'm going and uh, you notice of course that you know the length of the wire doesn't change so you saw all those different impedances there and that's the feed point impedance changing with frequency so you know, you see, see see things written about the feed point impedance of antennas and all that sort of stuff. But what you've got to bear in mind is that you know it's only go if if you match an antenna, if you match the dipole to um, to present a certain impedance, then as soon as you change the frequency or you change the band, then that impedance at that feed point changes. You know, nothing physically changes with the antenna setup, but um, the uh, the feed point impedance changes because the characteristics of the antenna are different on different frequencies. So there we go. Um, as always, hope you found that interesting. I'm going to go back and play that play this now and see how it looks. If it looks like you can see it, then I'll uh, I'll stick it up on the channel. As always, thanks for watching, and um, I'll catch you next time.